Frank Funk King. <laughs> Stanley walks in with a bottle of cough syrup and a, and a spoon. I said, hey Stan, is that the silver spoon you were born with? <laughs> right now I shake my head. I mean, why'd you do that? <laughs> he smiled, but when he smiled, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned the publishers value your versatility, your ability to work in a number of genres, horror and war and superhero. Uh, so you were called upon to draw a wide variety of material, which I guess worked out well for Captain America, because after the war, Captain America himself began to act in a wide variety of genres. Well, I'll tell you one thing, the paper that I started disappeared after the war. I'd like to tell you a little story about the war. Uh, one of the freelancers, I don't know whether he's a writer or not, artist, came in and says, the United States has a weapon that's going to win the war. We all took it in stride, you know, another rumor. That secret weapon turned out to, get, to be the atom bomb, so it wasn't much of a secret. <laughs> really, that happened. It's the truth. That, you know, we, it, it was a little hope of something that maybe what this guy was saying would be true. And now, I hate to say this, we're going through this again, unfortunately. Well, um, how did the end of World War II affect the comics industry? Well, we all got off, off our drawing boards and walked around and shaking our hands and heads and smiling and congratulating each other. Uh, but after that, it went back to normal, being normal again, you know. Well, I know the superheroes suffer at the end of the war. How did that affect the way he worked? Well, I didn't do uh, Patriot anymore. <laughs> yeah, he was gone. It just it just dropped him just like that. But uh, I, I worked on other stories, you know, Submariner, Human Torch, War Stories, uh, Sky Fi, Science Fiction, uh, Western. Whatever stand through with me, I did. I hated to draw horses. <laughs> yeah, why are you laughing, you know? We have to fake them sometimes, you know, when I, I drew a horse running, he had to know how to draw smoke to hide feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I recently looked at uh, some of my westerns and I did this, these horses look great. I mean, you know, sometimes we, we imagine we put a wall in front of something, but we climb over the wall and we conquer it. And I proved to myself that I could draw horses. And uh, they look pretty good. Um, after World War II, I mentioned Captain America underwent some changes. They experimented with horror stories and supernatural stories. Uh, as a creative person, you were just able to roll with all that. Wait. Uh, and that was well, the way from the start. What's that? Uh, Captain America is like sort of a little. He's married in him. I had a bad marriage, my first one. And uh, I went up to the Associated Press Syndicate with my work. Now there was a comic strip called Scorchy Smith. Anyone ever remember this? It goes back. Okay, I see a hand in a minute. Uh, this was created by a wonderful artist, Noel Sickles. And uh, Milton Kniff who did Terry and the Pirates. These were guys that were really, really masterful cartoonists. Well, anyway, uh, I always admired the Scorchy Smith comic strip, and I went up to the Associated Press. And by the way, I was a copy boy at the Associated Press when I was a kid. Anybody know what a copy boy was? Nobody. <laughs> See, when you speak to a young audience, you know, we used to tear off the ticker tape and give it to the editors so they could get a hold of what stories are uh, coming over. That's the way we had stories come over ticket tapes and we tear it off. We have five, six, seven copies and each editor or writer got a copy so they knew, you know, what to work on. And it's strange, I worked from, I think, eight, uh, 12 at night to eight or nine at, in the morning. So we had uh, one supervisor and this supervisor used to say, you give me one night for myself, come for me. Now, if you guys want to go to sleep, 
I used to find a dark spot in the sports department, get a few telephone books, and I slept part of the night. <laughs> but once the supervisor had to get his night off, we had to pay attention. So, but anyway, let me get back to, I went up to the Associated Press, and I showed my samples, okay? And I see the head going like this. They said, we want to send you to Mr. Wing, who was head of the Associated Press. I go see Mr. Wing, I remember him as clear as day, he's a bald-headed guy with a mustache. And he looked at my samples, and his head was going in a more positive manner. Let me stand up, I don't like sitting up, I don't want to look at you guys. You want to look at me? <laughs> and he said, all I wanted you to do is five comic strips for a week. Now, I was in a pretty bad first marriage. Uh, I used to say, which I shouldn't talk now because my ex-wife recently passed away, but she buried two husbands after me. And somebody said to me, how do I escape? I said, I didn't eat the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't true, but she did bury two husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 